That's, I, I just, I don't know why. I just had to do that to get ready today, man. It's like, it's like doing your like vocal exercises, right? Before. Honestly, I was a little scared. I didn't know how we were going to launch it in days. You just never know. You just never know. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, welcome to Atomic Math Transmissions Live. Uh, today we're paying Padme Amidala, the Royal Regent of Naboo. I had to think about that for a moment. Royal Regent of really wanted another R there, just for alliteration, for the love of alliteration. Um, anyways, uh, I'm gonna focus on the red dress. We're gonna do the face paint, and then hopefully do uh, the, um, the glowy globes, because I think that that's gonna be an interesting focal point, um, and something that uh, you know people wanna know about, and how to paint the glowy globes. They're important. Uh, they literally light up, too, as we were discussing. Um, we did not sculpt the big plug cord coming out the bottom <laughs> of the dress, though. We just we didn't do that. So we can kick it to the mini cam. We can do this up. We can finish it. We're not going to finish it, but we can try to finish it. I can attempt to finish it. You got this. Travel code this. activate. I got this. Look at that. We got a little studio one right there. I'm using for like reference. Um, kind of taking a look at how. Uh, uh, Brendan painted this Padme. Is that correct? Did Brendan paint this? I gotta think. I'm pretty sure Brendan painted this. Um, and I was curious how uh, the approach on the makeup, because I know how I was kind of thinking about it. And I was like, I'm kind of curious how we did it in the studio version. And uh, kind of taking a look at that and like really um, enjoyed seeing how different painters approach things. Uh, there's definitely a little bit of gray in the white and I think that that's a good choice. So when we get to the face paint, we're gonna put a little gray in there. First I gotta put a base coat of red on the dress. We're gonna start on the dress. We're gonna go back and forth actually. We're going to do a little here, a little there, as we're waiting for things to dry and such. Nice little textured um, scarf doodad. Hello, everyone. Hello. How's it going? What is going on? I'm excited to see how I tackle dress. Looking forward to this one. Dallas is a fit. No, I'm not a fantastic painter. I'm just, I'm just a, I'm just a, I'm just a, I'm just a boy doing his best. That's all I'm doing. I'm just doing my best. That's all. Yeah, that's all. That's all any of us can do. That's right. Just doing our best. Just making our way through the galaxy, right? So I think there have been a lot of questions online about like the choice for this Padme versus other versions. Can you talk to us about that discussion and what was considered? What was it? Why was there a choice? Look at it. I mean, correct. Like. You know I'm on board with this. <laughs> like, you have the squad of ultra-trained assassins with the uh, handmaidens. Padme is like one of the most competent fighters in the galaxy, like, look at that, look at that, uh, um, look at her uh, accuracy rate. Like, she never misses, right? She just doesn't miss. Um, and then it's a, it's an interesting outfit and a cool take on the character. And you know, who's to say we won't do something else later or you know given well, enough time everything is I think it's important for people to remember that all of these are snapshots in time yeah so if you know this is the we are brave squad pack and it's all about you know Padme in the handmade ends and so this this just makes sense for this you know moment and there'll be more moments which know? is very exciting as a as a Padme stand in the office. 
you just never know that what could be coming with what's in the future and the joy of like our games is like we kind of think about them as like ways to like explore the characters multiple ways when possible and when we when we get the opportunity and I think this was an interesting way to explore the squad plus Simone just wanted it like yeah that does help when getting things done <laughs> Simone's like tangerine dream dresses let's do it mm. sitting there like <laughs> let's roll let's party mm-hmm. add this to the list of hard faces to paint what Hard, there's no hard faces to paint with Shadow Point. What are you talking about? Come on. Come on, we made them bigger for you. I'm here to show you how easy it can be. That's my goal. Every, every puzzle has its challenge. Without challenge, what are you? What are you without challenge? Without the desire to push and grow and achieve more than you've ever achieved, what's the point? You got, you got just a microsecond of time in this great big universe. And you gotta, you gotta push. Two coats, get a nice red yarn. I didn't grab red ink. I'm a fool. TK, what's up? Best wardrobe in Star Wars. Good evening. Oh, what up, Darren? Sup, sup, sup. Um, hum, hum, hum. And you're bad like I am. Nah, you're not bad. Keep playing. Keep playing. I'm going to take a little white, a little blue, and the tiniest amount of like blush tone that together. It's going to kind of offset the white just a bit. This is like a titanium white. It's a very, very bright white. I'm going to try to look at my reference again. Yeah, that's about what I want. Perfect. 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 Uh, is there going to be a slowdown of squad releases? What? Um, no. we, we talk about stuff when we can talk about it. Um, be on the lookout for more information about all things coming up from all of our wonderful games. You can check it out over on Twitter and or Instagram for all ways news information and announcements. Um, it's uh, definitely going to be a good idea for folks to tune into Mini Stravaganza, which is September 14th through 16th where we'll talk more about plans for everything and while not everything will include and here's the date when it's coming um, hopefully we'll have time during that to take questions and uh, bring them from chat to our end of day streams Spoilers. Um, where we'll have a curated list of things that we can hopefully decide whether or not we can answer during the day and then give you guys some solid uh, some solidity when possible <laughs> that's what we'll call it Check out Mini Strav. Yeah. That's where you get your information. We're going to do it live. We're going to do it for three days. We're going to have paint streams. We're going to have chats with development. We're going to do all kinds of cool stuff. We're going to talk about things. And make sure you're following us. I just popped the social into chat there um, because that is where you'll first see, you know, any transmissions about the program schedule and what it what we're going to cover and stuff like that will be available via social within the next i mean definitely within the next month because we have less than a month till mini strap but uh within a i don't yeah uh, within a closer striking distance of the show it's gonna be a good time it's gonna be a good time you should come check us out that's that's where information happens you get information when you get information uh, Gwen to close you'll pick the best day to remember to tune in. Remember to tune in. Why are you not following again in those updates? Rude. Wrestler Smeagol love this pad. May surprise you only has a gar tag, not something for Naboo. I don't think no, Naboo tag is like just Naboo. Oh, I don't know. Seems a little niche. 
Vamos ver o Nep. O Elon McGray. Vamos lá. Hum. Ah, por favor. Will Shadow. Uh, as far as the new website is confirmed, we confirmed in our latest communications roundup that um, we're hoping to get that out this month. Um, and then hopefully you know, that will mean that we're not trying to upload things to two places. This is, we've definitely heard the community saying they want uh, those reference points. So we, we understand that's a tool that you guys enjoy and want to use. So we are, we are just simply trying to shorten that runway for you in whatever way we can. Don't interact with marketing team, please. They're working. They're working. I'm gonna put a little red in the flesh tone. We're keeping our hands fleshy. Fleshy. Oh, right in there. Kind of create that first shadow. We've turned in before, you know how we do. You know how we do. I think Scottish Painter here has something spicy for you, Dallas. Oh, I gotta look up. Hold on. <laughs> What? No. No, I've never played anything unpainted. That is just, that is blasphemy. If I wanted to play with unpainted miniatures, I'd just play chess. I want to put Sanguine into my red. Like a nice wine color. Like you do, you buckaroo. Like, I'm not here to yuck anyone's yum, you know? You should, I mean, honestly, no one should be yucking anyone's yum. This is rude. Um, but I, I, I can't do it. I can't, I cannot play with unpainted miniatures. Like, that, to me, like, that's the whole reason Hobby Miniatures was created, was to, to paint. Like that's, that's why it's there is, you know, there's lots of games, there's lots of types of games. Um, there's, um, but Hobby Miniatures holds that unique spot of like being a game that you take ownership into and um, you spend time with, like, you know, and sometimes an exorbitant amount of time, right? You know, hours and hours and hours of painting to get the miniatures ready for the tabletop, to get them ready for going down to the local club or, you know, inviting your friend over to the house or whatever, however you, you know, prefer to play or uh, get to play. It's to inspire and invoke the story of the game. It's That's what they're here to do and so for me um that's what actually, that's what drew me into the hobby miniature games you know like i said there's lots of games out there lots of board games and stuff like that but it was the it was the fact that i got to be like oh i'm going to paint this like this this is mine and i get to spend the time that's what made it interesting and, and unique um, and so I, I can't bring myself to, I cannot bring myself to play unpainted. I can't do it. I can't do it. You might check your sound. Music is almost louder than the mics. Oh, we fine. have fixed it. Um, Cat and Padme boxes are ones I'm most excited about from a rules standpoint. Yeah, the rules are really fun on both these squads, I think. I really enjoy Cad Bane. Um, Padme is very cool, too. I gotta be. I started my Dev Ronin. I gotta finish. I gotta finish that fill up and get Cad Bane and Aura Singh and that little Chandra fan painted so I can play them. Cause I can't play them until they're painted. I can't do it. I can't, Ann. I can't do it. 
any shatter point kit bashing plan similar to crash uh there we have a couple of hobby blogs uh um in mind um we'll probably be starting another one shortly i don't want to say too much right um, but I would expect one shortly, within a couple months. Um, I definitely am currently working on a secret Shatterpoint hobby project. <gasps> a secret one? Le Le guess. Not even betrayal. Not even I know? Not even you know. Well, honestly, I'm not shocked, but I, I, I am curious. Um... It's been, it's been one that I, it's, it's, it's been in my head, uh, since basically almost the inception of Shatterpoint, like, and, um, it's, it's kind of doing a lot. It's pushing me a lot of places, uh, sculpting wise. I'm not a sculptor, um, but I'm having to do a lot of sculpting on it. Um, and it's nice once again. What's the point of doing something if you're not being pushed um, and challenged? Uh, so I, I like the challenge. I like the push. I like growth. I like uh, trying new things. Uh, this is definitely pushing me to try new things. I'm I'm really liking where it's at. Uh, it's got a little further to go before I'm willing to show it off. Uh, but I will be turning pictures over to Ann think and then I think then you can I was gonna say you, you better with. let me post about it <laughs> yeah uh, look I'm I'm real excited about it um I think it's a really neat little project and um you know I I I, I hope you post it I hope yeah. um so I, I just gotta get a little further and it's just been something I'm doing on my spare time right it's like it's just kind of like private piece at home working on it in my spare time and so I haven't really talked about it. I've shown it to um, Kevin and Chris uh, to, to talk about the sculpting aspects like like what I need to do here like how do, how should I approach this from a sculpting perspective. Um, now it's, I feel like I've talked it up too much like <laughs> it's not it's not it's not well to set everybody's expectations on these hobby, um, these staff hobby challenges and, and whatnot, you know, this is something that we've wanted to share our joy and our hobby time for a bit, but, you know, it, as you all know, you're part of the community. These things take time, and so we want to make sure that, you know, we're, we're grabbing stuff that people are already interested in in completing and that you know we want to keep all of this cool stuff coming your way during <laughs> during work hours so uh the hobby stuff is something that we share with you guys from a place of you know enjoyment and wanting to share you know what we're out there doing and um you know it definitely won't come out at the same regularity as some of our other content that's really mission critical to making sure that you guys understand what each thing is that's coming out and get you information about it. But we are trying to do it with greater regularity and we've been really um, happy that people have enjoyed seeing what we've done so far. So Dallas and I are definitely cooking up more challenge material. Definitely, definitely. All right, I went a little darker for the face. A little more shadow. Right along the edge of that nose. Under the lip, I want to create some definition there. And the eye socket, the entire ocular cavity. Down this side of the nose is ever so slightly. And for for folks, uh, I know Dazak here was talking about sharing um, community things. The best place to put those to share is in the Shatterpoint official Facebook group um, because we all look at that for sure and see them and you know comment when we when we see something we're excited about just like anybody else. Um, that's the best place to share and to get inspiration from for sure.
Four shirt. Let's add a little more flesh tone to that. Just a little touch of PT, PT skin. I'll put that right up for the mid tone. Okay. So Dallas, with this flesh tone to kind of give the the blush of life to <laughs> to Padme, where are you applying that primarily? So yeah, the goal is always even so even though our face is painted pale white, I still want to give that little bit of life. I don't want it to look dead and placid. I want that little touch of life. Um, so I'm just kind of getting it in that mid-tone where like maybe uh, the broader surfaces of the flesh. So the forehead where like maybe the light would catch it or maybe the paint's rubbed a little more off or thinner just just to put some life in there i don't want her to look scary i mean she's scary because she's like padme and just a boss but i don't want her to look i don't want her to look dead and you know like darth padme or something like that so we're just putting a little bit of that pt tone in there just to make her feel alive, right? We don't want to overdo it. We don't want to overdo it. So just here and there, maybe a little touch right in the bridge of the nose where the, the eye uh, connects to the brow. Just being real strategic. Just thinking about how to sculpt the face. We were talking about face sculpting yesterday and uh, Schick brought up uh, watching makeup tutorials was something that you had recommended before. Oh yeah, I watch, okay, first off, I watch a lot of- um, Drag race? Drag race. <laughs> How did I know? I watch a lot of that. And also just uh, the way the way drag makeup works or like beauty makeup. Um, so like, so like, okay, very, very young Dallas, like 13 year old Dallas, wanted to be special effects makeup design artist. Mm -hmm. That's what Dallas dreams of. Um, doing like horror makeup. Mm -hmm. I want to do horror makeup. That's what I wanted to do when I was like 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, right? Part of the curriculum for horror makeup is beauty makeup. Like you have to learn to do beauty makeup as part of the curriculum to, to be a horror makeup. And so I was already like interested in like learning how to do beauty makeup. But when I started painting miniatures, what I realized very quickly is like that translates to painting miniature faces too. Um, especially like with drag makeup, because you can take a very like say round face with a pudgy nose and with makeup you can get a more defined jawline uh high cheekbones and thin yes. nose you this can, is this is what the kids call snatched dallas yeah you get you snatched. gotta you gotta get snatched um <laughs> you 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 refine and define through makeup what the face looks like and you can do that on miniatures as well uh, once you practice it and look at it. so like learning how to put colors um, next to other colors learn how to put the shadow in the right space along the bridge of the nose um, you can get uh, you can ch you can change the shape and expression through paint um, so these are very very useful tools. I'm not going to say important, like you don't have to learn them, but if you're interested, you would be interested in learning how to do that. You should check it out. Learn how, learn how makeup works. Um, beauty makeup, contouring, highlighting, yeah, 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 all that stuff. Just wonderful, wonderful, uh, ideas and philosophies on, on shape, form and light. So yeah, I mean, for, for, we had somebody earlier saying, you know, faces were hard. This is a great, you know, other other way to learn about how to do faces on something bigger. And then, you know, 
miniaturize it just like everything. <laughs> Hi, Fox. The best answer to that question is tune in right here on Twitch on September 14th, 15th, and 16th for Mini Stravaganza, where we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. Mini Stravaganza hype. Like, we can't talk about everything. I mean, I mean, my life is two years in the future, so <laughs> I can't talk about that, but... But yes, we'll, we will be talking about new things for... <coughs> excuse me. New things uh, for the games that we're, we're focusing on for this mini strap. Yeah, there's more out. information on that in the uh, most recent communications roundup on our transmissions. Check it out. Join that. Be hype. Also, Twitter and our Instagram, because that's just, I'm just plugging that all day today. I'm just Twitter and our Instagram. Check that out. That's where all the latest news and information and announcements for Atomic West Games comes. And so you should check that out, because that's where we talk about stuff uh, and let you know what's coming up. But the answer always is, yes, yeah, something is always in the works. Doing a little white now, a little add a little white. Picking out some highlights. Shocked, you're not far from, from getting that stuff. Just keep an eye on social, because we put out the um, databank download for Padme yesterday or the day before so odds are those sassy little handmaidens aren't that far behind just process of elimination there how do i how do i want to deal with this top lip you don't want to overdo the top lip tell me more about that what do you mean so you don't want to overdo the top lip uh, on miniatures. There's, it's, it becomes too pronounced and it looks really weird. Um, also, I don't paint the top lip um, on, like, let's say, female miniatures. Uh, I don't paint the top lip. Uh, they look like clowns, basically. They look like they're duck lipping on their Instagrams. Um, so I kind of tend to not paint the top lip. I, f I focus only on the bottom lip. Um, there's just not enough room for it to translate properly um, at scale, right? You're dealing with miniatures, so you're dealing with scale. You're dealing with the way light works at this scale. And it's always just a, an interesting battle, right? Yeah. Think about how light works and create all that stuff and it's always just interesting mm. can anyone else hear it? what's your approach to highlighting developing red clock we're working on TK right now we got one base layer of red then we added sanguine to it sanguine is a uh, basically a mix of blue and red uh, when you mix blue and red together you get purple um, and that was like my first shadow. Um, we're going to keep developing our, our red cloth as we work today. Um, we're going to go down into blue and, uh, and then you can choose either peach or pink or orange highlights. I think I'm going to go orange because I think I want to take that like red punchy saturation. We can go back to that actually. Let's throw a little blue into our sanguine. Really dark color. We're gonna bring that down. We're going to start shading. I 
We're just gonna do that entire panel. It's an easy way to start shadowing. Just pick that panel and just let it be all the dark blue. And then the second panel will start blending it out. Same on the side, second panel will start blending it out. I guess I w wouldn't necessarily have ever thought to do blue shadow on red. What's the, is there like a color theory behind that or just that shadows are always shades of different? Um, so in miniature, a lot of miniature is creating your contrast and drawing attention. Color is a great way to do that. Um, if you look at a red shirt, uh, the shadows tend to move down to purple. Uh, so adding blue to it lends itself to moving down to the purples. Um, it's just a good, it's just a good tone. Um, you could do green as well. It depends on what you're trying to achieve. Um, there's lots of different ways to like add color and shadow. Adding black is like the worst. I, I, I that's like real old school miniature paints. It's like throw some black in it, and that's how you make shadow. It's like, well, that that it's we're we're a little more sophisticated than that now. Like that's just old school miniature painters, but you know. The art has evolved. Uh, the conversation has evolved. So people are getting more creative and artistic. A lot more artistic people are moving, have moved to miniatures over the past 20 years, um, especially in the past 10, I would say. Uh, so learning how to develop color has just become more important. Um, and one of, so, but green is amazing when you're putting in the, red um i like blue especially if i'm going to move up to orange for my highlights because blue and orange are your uh are your contrasting colors uh look at any movie poster from the past like 30 years and you'll understand it immediately um the blue orange contrast like that's just what movie posters do now this is blue and orange it's just it's so contrasty and punchy. It's pretty amazing how how much deeper, like if I'll, I'll show folks on the camera, if you look at the, um, even just the palette here and see the different variations on red we were using and then the shadow color that Dallas is mixed in. Yeah, all in that is the dress right now. See it actually on the miniature. The red looks so much like richer uh, for the blue shadows, and that's... That's what it does. Just a wild art time on stream today <laughs> it just adds, for me. It just adds that deep richness. It adds that depth. It adds something for your eye to, like, dance around and play against. And those are all very important things when you're trying to draw interest and uh, create something. So super important to, uh, you know, you don't have to learn it, obviously. You can paint more traditionally. That's fine. No one's going to be mad at you. Um, but today we're talking more, you know, a little more advanced. You know, that's okay. Not too much. You can do it. I believe in you. We have really uh, also like majestic. There's lots of majestic flowing fabric and a lot of like the motion of the miniatures in this line. Um, and the, the heaviness to this feels really tangible. Um, like you can imagine the, for, for anyone who's into costumes, like a horsehair hem or like a weighted hem. Um, and it just, it feels right. How do you guys think about motion when it comes to fabric for miniatures? Uh, when we first started the conversation about Shatterpoint, uh, what, over three years now? It's so long ago. Um, it was very much like, I want to do what I've always wanted to do in miniatures and take and really push what we want to see in miniature. And uh, cloth is like the very first thing um, that... I talked to uh, Marco and the team about is just like 
stylizing it and making it almost a character of its own because there's so much cloth and making it fun and easy to paint is super important to us and how do you do that and so really like leaning into movement um, leaning into the stylization uh, trying to develop weight um, or lack of weight is super important to the overall just the fundamental starting point of what is shatter point from a miniature's design perspective um, it was kind of like the first conversation like the the cloth and the faces how are we going to define faces The know-it-all guy says shower point measures are all excellently designed, and since he, he's a know-it-all guy, he must know. And I cannot, I cannot refute this uh, proclamation. I see no lies here in chat today. Yeah, this is, this is legit. You know, there's always things we can improve. There, there just is. We're always learning, pushing, growing. Uh, you know higher, further, faster, um, just, just trying to push and grow and become the best version of ourselves we can. Um, you know, we talked about, you know, Schick just talked about how the MCP core box was the best we could do. And now the new core box is the best we can do. Uh, it doesn't mean the old one was bad. It's just at the time, that was the best we could do. And now we can do better. And we're always gonna to push to do better on every aspect from sculpting to, uh, you know, communicating to art, to design, to marketing, to everything. We're, this studio is all about pushing. We're leveling up, baby. If you're not leveling up, you're leveling down. I don't know. I, <laughs> you really committed. I, I, I went there just hard. I just. This really just came in. <laughs> well, um, we've got a question here that I think uh, we, we talk about a little bit, but the um, two brush technique. Do you have any maybe advice for people wanting to start that or even maybe a miniature from the Shatterpoint line that would be a good place to practice? Oh, uh, I think... <clears throat> I think the... Probably the clones from the core box would be a good starting point, even though everybody is like, why? No. Um, <laughs> um, Sorry, Star Wars. It's um, it's a practice technique. Um, if you've been doing miniature painting for as long as I have, um, back when the techniques were so rudimentary, um, you were taught you know, oh, you just throw, you throw a wash on there. And you just throw a black wash over chainmail. And you're like, moly moly, look at the, look at the chainmail. I can see everything. This is wizardry. Um, that's a technique that's very uh, instantaneous. Mm -hmm. It's a very instantaneous reward. Um, there's a lot of techniques out there for miniature painting that are not instantaneous. Um, there's glazing there's two brush blending there's the loaded brush by one mr ben comet um like there's there's so many techniques yeah that are not going to give you instantaneous success they're going to give you practice success and as you practice them and develop them what they're going to do is give you skills that you never had before and that you never thought possible and that's super important. Um, I am a very fast painter. And the reason is literally because I know how to brush very fast and lets me blend and create shadow and light and contrast very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, also, a uh, fun secret, painting art is the, uh, art is really just a trick of telling people what they see 
So like learning how to lie, that's just that's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, so it's armor is a good spot. Like big broad areas are a good place to start. Two brushing, not so much washing, right? Um, layering, layering is a good technique to learn uh, on big flat surfaces like armor plates. So once again. Those clones are a wonderful starting point for that. And if clones aren't your speed, I've been having a lot of luck uh, trying it on Mandos. So. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, Mandalorians, uh, the Clan Krees, the uh, Super Commandos. Like, it's just keep, just keep practicing. Never give up. Never surrender. Uh, Know it all says it's amazing how much you're able to express while painting because it's hard to do two things at once. And Schick has pointed out that you talk more when you paint. <laughs> <laughs> okay, rude. This is rude. Come on. True or not true, though, Dallas? Yeah, uh, like I'm not a chatty guy. <laughs> all right. <laughs> My favorite thing about meetings with Dallas is most of the time I see the top of his head because he's painting while we're chatting. And we got a lot to do. That's true. That's true. <laughs> That's just true. I'm not a chat I'm not a chatty guy. I'm not a chatty guy. Can't help it. I'm not a chatty guy. Uh the line goes straight down. Yeah, straight down. Wait, wait, wait. What am I doing wrong? Oh. Oh. We have to go all over. We have to start this all over. Why? What happened? I forgot. This is a weird one. It's literally the way she is. Uh, it is her top lip that is red. Oh, yeah. Sorry, bud. Which is the exact opposite of how I normally paint lips. I was well, like, she's got the one line on the bottom lip. She's got the one line. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna, I am going to paint the bottom lip like I already have. And I'm just going to barely push up onto the top lip the slightest red line. Like right now she looks like she's about to ready to sell you a cheeseburger. What? <laughs> she's about to sell you a cheeseburger? Yeah, Am I missing something? She looks like a clown. Oh, well, there you go. I'm not a chatty guy, I'm sorry. Tony knows I'm a very succinct person too. I'm a very succinct person. I like to get right to the point. Mm -hmm. I don't like to beat around the bush. All right, now we're going to remove bottom lip paint. Woo! There's definitely a sense, I think, in you know how we all learn to communicate with each other at the studio that when you um, say something you really mean it because you wouldn't say it if you didn't and I think that's we all have to get used to being able to give each other feedback because it's the only way any of us grows oh yeah that's definitely some people uh, it takes somebody somebody a long time to learn from me I feel like is like when I say something, there's no like hidden, there's no like layers. Yeah, that is exactly what you mean. If I'm like, if I'm asking a question, I'm not trying to trap you. I'm, I'm literally just like, please just answer yes or no. In my head, I'm like, please just answer yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> just please tell me yes or no. I'd love to see Grogu. Didn't we show Grogu? We showed at Adepticon um, 
Din and Grogu as a future tease. He's so wee. He's a little boy. Well, he's, he's, we always treat him like he's a baby, but he is like 50, right? <laughs> oh, I'm very bald. Are we talking about my bald spot? Oh, no, I'm just bald. I gave up. I gave up so many years ago. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Baby Yoda, Mando, Armor Wang. That's funny. But also, like, that's a great example of how you can make a mistake and, like, adjust. Yeah. You don't have to be so afraid of messing up. Painting miniatures is the fine art of correcting one's mistakes. That's just what happens. Sometimes you just, sometimes you just boff it and you just gotta roll with it. And that's okay. Ain't nobody mad. Uh, Kale asks um, if we do all of our painting in house. So maybe you wanna talk about how uh, we get those studio miniatures ready for photography, if you can. Oh, we got. Actually, we got two really good questions there, don't we? Do we do our painting in-house? Uh, 99.9% .9 of the painting is done um, by a wonderful team of freelancers that we have. Um, actually, if you look at the credits, you can see who paints everything. Uh, we credit all of our freelancers from um, art to miniature painting, um, you know, we very much give credit where credit's due. Um, it's very important to us. I gotta hurry up or we're not gonna get this a glow painted. I wanna get at least one glow painted. I've added orange to the red um, to start highlighting. It's gonna give more punch, especially because orange and blue are your contrast colors. Um, so if you look at all the credits, we, we credit our freelancers the name you're probably going to see the most is Brendan Roy. Uh, Brendan uh, paints a, 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 just a ton of miniatures for us. Um, and just a fine gentleman in general with a magnificent beard. Um, and, you, you know, there's other names you'll see. Elizabeth Beckley, Aaron Lovejoy. Uh, Oscar paints for us. You know, we got several people doing different things. Some of them are specialized. Um, you know, we got we got some people that just paint Legion. Star Wars Legion has a very, very distinct look to the way we approach the miniature painting. Shatterpoint has a distinct look. Christ Protocol has a distinct look. Um, so we like to find people that specialize in those and work with them and develop them to, to get it the way we like it. Um, so there have been a few things painted in house. Um, I painted a few things. Um, Schick painted some cars for the Corsa, if I remember correctly. I, I was not there, so I do, I cannot confirm or deny that. That was, <laughs> yeah, that was like, out loud, like thinking, literally, like, like I'm pretty sure Schick painted some of the cars in the corset. Um, I painted only a couple of things, uh, but most of it's most of it's out of house. I did paint. I did paint the Legion Grogu. Can't confirm. I have I've become quite proficient at Grogu flesh because that is one of the hardest, I will say, that's one of the hardest uh, flesh tones to get just perfect. Um, very unique uh, palette. Um, all right. So we've done most of the red. I would keep adding orange, moving into yellow. I really want to do one of the 
Oh, some of the original for product photography, Schick built uh, the table for that. Um, the other one, where'd it go? Oh, do you have to tell yourself when to stop tinkering with the painting process is too much bad. Uh, too much can be bad, of course. Um, it, especially if you paint very, uh, with a very thick paint. Um, I paint with a very thin paint, so I can tinker for much, much longer. Um, I'm not a tinkerer. My favorite color is done, as in finished. Um, I've also been doing this for a very, very long time. Um, so I kind of know, like, I kind of know where I'm going, even if I don't have a plan. Um, so, like, and I know how to revise, and I think learning how to revise is super important. Um, painting thin allows you more revisions, um, but I usually have an end goal in mind, and I try not to. I try not to overthink it, and even if I don't, even if I don't perfect, like that's perfect. That's that's like I gotta remember the destiny of the miniature. Uh, join us at Main Street again, so where we might talk more about destiny of miniatures. Um, I like to have a destiny for the miniature because there's different there's different destinies for the miniatures. There's tabletop, there's display, there's studio, there's competition. Um, all those mean different things. So if I'm if I'm just painting something like this, this is for me to play a game of Chatterpoint um, on my kitchen table against my partner. Um, sorry, girl, you gotta get your own pad, May. Um, so my goal for this is much lower than if I was painting this for the studio or for competition or for display. Like if I was doing like a fancy little plinth display and want to give it away as a gift or something like that. Um, the, 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 the desire and need and the destiny of the mentor changes. So. I really like to make sure I maintain the destiny of the miniature and keep that in mind when I'm painting it. So if I don't nail this, if I'm like, well, that 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 line, that line looks bad, so I'll just kind of blend it. Meh, that's not perfect. Don't care. It's fine. Because it's for tabletop. Okay, we got a yellow down. Uh, we want to paint this sort of like a gem. I'm gonna do one more yellow. I'm gonna put a little touch of orange in there though. Just a little touch of orange. We might not make it. We might have to go over a little bit, Ann. Sorry. I really wanna get this gym done, but we For talked. For Padme? Sure. We talked a lot today. I also, I let I let shit go over yesterday too, so. Well, shit gets to go over, I get to go over. <laughs> I just wanna get this, I just wanna get this globe, one globe, because I think I think people want to see at least one globe. How do we approach the globe? While that second layer dries, I want to like I want to. I don't usually put, uh, paint like multiple layers. I usually just let the shades and the highlights and my blending kind of like work uh, to cover any mishmashy nonsense that I may be throwing down. Uh, so I don't super care too much. Um, about perfect base coats, meh, perfect base coats, that's my, meh, that's, that's for me, you know, you, you can differ, that's great, good, um, we all should differ, you paint your way, I'll paint it my, uh, I'll learn from you, learn, you learn from me though, don't yuck my yum, um, but I don't. I typically don't throw down like the perfect base coat layer. Uh, I let I let my base coats be a little loosey goosey because I'm gonna like I'm gonna bring over the paint as we go. I'm gonna bring over the um, uh, shadows and the highlights and just kind of let that base coat get sort of dis disappeared. Uh, you sculpted the plug onto your personal mini, right? Well, I don't know what that means. He's talking about the um, 
how how she's plugged into the wall and the very commonly seen screen cap of this moment. No, well, not this moment, but the oh. moment where she's standing at the window. No. <laughs> I was like the pl- like I was thinking of the sculpting plug. The, yeah, the no. key. <laughs> I like the key. What, the, I, I, I don't think I left a key on on Dung. I like, am I considering control? doing that on my Padme though. Just, you should. Just a little. Um, I do have a so like the Sabe miniature comes with well th- this squad pack comes with like a busted B one because of course these two mm-hmm. are just blasting B ones. Yeah. All day. Um, can't stop, won't stop. Uh, it, you can't stop not stopping for sure. <laughs> um, I did so. I took the arm and put it in front of Padme here, uh, and then I did a little um, um, like uh, ballast stuff, just to throw a little little something fancy on mm-hmm. all their bases uh, to tie them together. Um, it'll look good. It's fine. It'll look good. Hi, Fox. Love how it's coming out. Me too, actually. All right. Uh, I can't wait to see this finito. We're going to take more orange. We're going to blend now. So there's time to blend. There's time not to blend. There's time to have smooth. There's time to not have smooth. That's called contrast. Contrast is important. In miniature, it's it's vital. The three rules of painting miniatures is contrast, contrast, contrast. Um, so the more different types of contrast you can get in, the better. So for this, we want to go a little bit smoother because it's a light and a soft glow. So I'm going to blend that out, get a nice smooth blend with my second brush. Just that little bit of yellow showing through. Looks lovely. Looks lovely. Then we're going to take some red. I really want some punchy red. I do like the slight variation from the corset bases with the V1 scrap. Yeah, it's, you never know when stuff like that's going to show up. I mean, heck, throw the toque on somebody's base. Like, he's, you know, he's there for funsies. Um, there's no rules. Like, we like throwing like a little, we like throwing in like a little this and that here and there, have fun. And, you know, you never know it. You never know it's going to show up as a fun thing inside a box. So we're gonna add a little orange and red. She glows, she gleams. She glows so much. This little bottom thing is black, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like a little like beetle or something. I've never, I don't know what the like artistic reference is for these. Uh, I know that the the headdress is from uh, a Japanese princess mm-hmm. from like, I don't know, like the 1700s or something. I can't remember. Yeah, there's that one. And then there's the other dress that she has. It's like a Mongolian. Yeah. The references are pretty like amazing. Lovely They're references. Bold. The, the, the diverse breadth of the human experience expressed into a sci-fi power struggle of diplomacy and mm-hmm. negotiation. Take a little black. Put a little red in the black. I want to start blocking out this little lower globe because this thing is just black-ish. I totally did not get that black paint mixed up good enough. <laughs> is there a mixer in here? I thought there was. I don't, I don't know, I'm sorry. Me. I painted my 501st with the orange Ahsoka face paint from Clothes More True. That sounds really cool. I'd love to see those. <laughs> yeah, if y'all are painting, make sure you're putting those in the uh, community pages for the different games because we love to see them. I sneak in there every now and then. I, I, I have a limit of social media. Yeah. But uh, I do sneak in there every now and then and take a, take a gander what's happening. But rest assured, people, you know, from our team find stuff and then share it on our, you know, communications channels internally. So we, we're always celebrating you guys and what you're doing. It's true. 
Um, let's throw a little teal in there. Make it like a purple. There's so many Senate meetings in the prequel. What are you talking about? That's all it is. Well, they're, they're also, <laughs> I'm just going to push my, my glasses up on my nose here, but um, there are a lot of deleted scenes um, from Revenge of the Sith that show more of Padme reading, uh, meeting with Bale and Mon Mothma and all that stuff. So if you're curious about and they were they were completely done and they've they've been you know saved and put out there so a lot of them are out in the world you can easily find them and it puts a lot of things in context uh, that we don't actually see in the final version of the film. There's there's even one where uh, it's. Padme and uh, our everybody's favorite Chancellor uh, Palpatine, where she very clearly has figured figured out that it's a bad time um, before anybody else does, and it's uh, it's clear to see why for pacing like that kind of thing didn't make sense to the central what they were trying to do with the central story, but it's fun to see those scenes nonetheless. Black now that I got it shaken up. So, uh, were you drawing black around the edge to create that contrast there? Or? Uh, that's not black, it's a purple. a purple. I mixed teal and red together. I see. And got a nice purple around the edge, and I did, I'm going to blend that down over mm -hmm. the top just a little touch. Um, the paint's a little thinner than I want. To Pull it up the palette so folks can see more. It was like a teal and red mixed together. Go very fast. Then we're going to take our yellow and some white. We want this to go all the way down to the shadow because it should not have shadow. This is a light. But it is also a globe, so it has three dimensionality. I'm going to finish real soon, Ian. Sorry. Just adding more white. If you got questions about the face or the red dress, ask them now. Get it, ask them now. And then in the darkest part, we're going to put a little tiny dot. We're going to draw a line over this. Not quite pure white. There's like a little yellow in there. Are these little shine lines? Yeah. I think that needs a little touch more. I see people get very afraid of using white. I'm not. Crank the highlights. You heard it here, kids. Crank those highlights.
And then, like, I made a little mess, so I would go back with some reds um, and clean up around. This is going to be tricky, too, because we're on my, or we're on the live, and I really want to flip the measure upside down, and I can't. Uh, Sai, if you were to go and have a look, know it all, at our VODs on YouTube, I believe Schick painted Mother Talzin. That was Schick, right? That wasn't you. Uh, Do you on, remember? On live stream? On live. Um, I think it was Schick. That was Schick. Yeah. So this doesn't typically have... I'm going to put like a little highlight here just to kind of define the shape. What do you think? I love her. What does it look? Does the it look glow right? is The glow is a pretty amazing effect because we have, especially right next to that deep shadow Pushing portion. it, yeah. You, light next to dark. Like that's, that's contrast, right? Like yeah. anytime you have something bright, you want something dark next to it. It makes the light thing lighter, it makes the dark thing darker. So having that darkness next to that light is really going to push it. This one's really going to pop, this one under here. Yeah. Because I will, I'm not going to paint it with shadow, right? Right, because like, it's glowing. This is what the philosophy of miniature painting gets to be, right? It's like thinking about like, well, it's under here, so you, I would paint this with shadow. Well, no, but this is a light. Yeah. It's a soft, glowy light, but but a light. But a light nonetheless. So don't do it with shadow on it. This has like a little bit of that because you want to give form, almost like a gem. Mm -hmm. um, I could also see just doing like, almost like a pure, like sure. yellow with just a little touch of orange and maybe a little touch of red. Um, I like that little bit of blue right next to the side, like uh -huh. like the globe um, has form. Um, but I could see I could see a couple of different ways to approach it. This is just the way I approached it. It's also great to see, you know, this helps folks when they're thinking about painting this red, um, and this goes for other other projects as well. But it's not just moving a shade up or down with black and white for your shadows and your highlights, right? Like it's oh yeah, black and white. About how different shades create. Different so shades. many different ways to to highlight. Um, using just something like a pure, like an off-white added to every color gives you control over the overall value mm -hmm. and keeps everything tonally the same because if you add that to green and you add that to blue and you add that to red, it's going to tonally bring it up close to each other. So harmonizing your highlight color and stuff like that, thinking about how your highlights work, thinking about how your shadows, how, it's, it's more complex thinking. It's not just mm -hmm. base cut wash highlight, of course. Like I say, we like to teach people how to paint, not what to paint here um, on, on, on our streams. But that's this is my approach to the white face paint, the red cloth, and the globe. That's how I would do it. That's how I would do it. I only went 10 minutes over. You, I mean, you really didn't go that far over at all. I'm proud of you. I thought it was going to be worse. I really wanted to paint that globe, though. I thought, you know, I, you I felt it was important. Now I kind of want to do it a different way. So come back next time for more bad maze. Maybe I'll do a different one and just say. post a picture. <laughs> All right. Remember every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, right here on Twitch. You've already done it once. Tell your grandma. Dude, she'll do it. She'll join us. Grandmas love to paint miniatures. That's what I was told. Um, check us out right here on Twitch for Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. We hang out and we paint and we talk to you and we answer questions. It's pretty cool. Um, every... Oh, coming up, September... 14, 15, and 16 is mini stravaganza. It's the atomic mass, like a three day, like celebration of cool stuff. And you should totally hang out with us because it's three whole days of nonstop content. That is certainly its official name. The atomic mass games, extravaganza, mini strav, maximize cool stuff, fun Ma times. Maximize cool times. stuff, fun times. It's like a, it's like a mojo doja casa house. <laughs> Yeah, it's got that vibe for sure. It's got sure. the vibe. It's got the vibe. 
Um, so remember to check us out at Main Extravaganza. We're going to be going over a lot of cool stuff. It's going to be really, really fun. And for all the latest news information and announcements coming from Atomic Mass Transmissions or Atomic Mass Games, check us out on Twitter and or Instagram. That's where we post the stuff when we're ready to post it. And never before and never after. But unless it's late. And then it's after. Precisely when we're able to. That's when it's going to happen. So until next time, thanks for hanging out. Bye.